Hello church, hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far. Today we're going to be reading from John chapter 21 uh, in the first three verses. So let's start off with uh, verse 1. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Verse 2. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out fishing, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. So today I wanted to talk about community and fellowship and the importance of being together as Christians and staying together. And I hope that you guys can reflect right now in this time that we have and look at the importance of people around us and the community around us. So if you look at verse 2 specifically, it, it gives the names of the disciples and then it ends on a statement. So Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana, sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together, period. They were just together, right? It said that uh, Simon Peter said, let's go fishing. They said, okay, we'll go, we'll go fishing, right? Something was holding them together. This was after the death um, and resurrection of Christ. And Christ was already showing up to people, Mary, Thomas, he was already showing up. And this was one of the times when Jesus was on the shore, told them to cast the uh, net to the other side, and then Peter ended up swimming out, right? This was another moment where Jesus showed himself, right? Something was holding the disciples together. And it was the risen Savior that held them together. The fact that they had a story, something to share, a, a revelation to share that God revealed himself to them. They were passionate about it. And think about what they were talking about in the boat while they were fishing. Most likely they were talking about God and how he revealed himself. Because if you read and look at the descriptions, the accounts of how Christ revealed himself, which we're going to do a little later, to people, it was different. It was different from person to person, from character to character, right? And so when they were in the boat fishing, they were there together because they had a general revelation of Christ. And so they had to work at being together. It didn't go smoothly. If you look at how Peter presented the let's go fishing, the disciples said, yes, we'll go fishing to be together, right? They, they wanted just to be together. If you look at the, the characters within, right? You look at John and you look at Peter. John and Peter are two different types of people, right? Peter was more, more rugged. He was more, let's go do this, let's go do that. He was more upfront. John called himself the disciple that Jesus loved. He, he laid, on, uh, laid back at Jesus' lap and looked at him. This the way that they, that, they, that they were as people was different, but they were still held together, right? Held together by the risen Christ. Even though they were different, they were still together, right? So what draws them together is both the uniformity and diversity with their experience in Christ. So like I said, they, Christ was showing himself, revealing himself differently to different people. So what held them together was the uniformity that Christ actually revealed himself to them, right? They're like, hey, I had that too. And the diversity which they were able to talk about amongst themselves, look what Christ did, look how, how, look how he did this, look how he said this, right? That gave them the community, the fellowship that they needed, right? So if you look at yourself, how real is the uh, risen Christ to you? How real is God to you? How real is his resurrection? How real is his sacrifice to you? If you meet someone else, let's say a Christian, right, that you don't know, you don't have any idea of, maybe they're from a different culture, right? If you meet somebody else and you don't necessarily want to be with them or you have no interest in them at all, have you really seen and have you really been revealed to Christ and His sacrifice, right? I know many times where people or even my, I myself would go to different countries and I would happen to say, oh, I'm a Christian as well. And they, you can sense the passion from the person and you automatically feel a bond that just because they're a Christian, just because they've seen the risen Christ, just because they understand God, you automatically just, something clicks, you know, something, you have a connection with the person. So if we look at two examples really quickly, Mary and Thomas, um, this is in John chapter 20, verses 17 and 27. So for Mary, when she came up to Jesus, Jesus said in King's James version, he says, don't, uh, touch me not, don't touch me, right? And then when he revealed himself to Thomas in verse 27, he told Thomas to put your finger here. He told Thomas to touch him. He told Mary not to touch him. So two people, the same event, but with a different experience, right? Christ revealed himself to Mary differently than he did to Thomas, right? But he still revealed himself as the risen Christ, both the uniformity and diversity, like I said earlier. So the point where I'm getting at is here, you will not know Christians unless you know Jesus, and you will not know Jesus unless you know Christians to the full extent. So I'm going to read a quote from C.S. Lewis, his book, Four Loves, and I kind of want to dive in a little deeper into, the, into how, in, how knowing Christians allows for you to know Christ closer and vice versa. So in each of my friends, there is something that only some other friend can fully bring out. But myself, but by myself, I'm not large enough to call the whole man into activity. I want other lights than my own to show all his facets. 
Basically, C.S. Lewis is saying that if we have a group of people and the fact that the way that I react to, let's say, um, let's say, I'll say Dima. Let's say the way that I react to Dima's joke, the way I respond, the way I laugh is, is different than the way that Mario would. And the way that my friend Mario would react to it, I would understand a little bit different the way that it was presented from Dima. Right. So what he's saying here is each soul has a unique, each person has a unique vision of God and a unique interpretation because we're all made we're all in the image of God, yet we're all um, fearfully and wonderfully made. We're unique. And that communicates to all the, like the rest of the people. So Thomas would have never known a side of Jesus that only Mary would call out unless he knew Mary. So according to Thomas's experience, Jesus told him to touch, touch him right here. He would have never known that Jesus told Mary not to touch her uh, not for Mary not to touch him unless he talked to Mary, unless they fellowshiped, and then unless they actually talked about it. Mary, the reason why she, uh, the reason why Christ didn't want her to touch him is because she's a different kind of person. She needed different evidence. She needed different things in order for her to completely understand the revelation of God. And same thing for Thomas. If you look at John, uh, if you look at Mary, all of them, they had their own unique experiences, and they would never know a side of Jesus unless they met the person and get to know him. So what's so multidimensional about fellowship? An experience to get to know Jesus brings us to know other Christians in a way we, could, we couldn't know them otherwise. So for example, uh, my family likes to host um, guests, pastors, and they, they, they spend the night and sometimes I get to talk to them. And one time a pastor needed a car. He needed my car. Well, he needed a car and I offered him my car. And because he's a, I know him to be a faithful pastor and a good Christian. I had no worry at all, even though I've never met the man before, to give him my car and let him ride it for a day because he needed to do things. I didn't have any worry because I know he's a good person and I just wasn't worried that he's going to steal it, right? So an experience to get to know Jesus brings us to know Christians in another way. So now that I knew that, know that he knew Jesus in a different way and I knew the same Jesus, right, but in a different way, that kind of brought uniformity and it allowed me to make a sacrifice to him to let, to let him use my car without any worry for me. So therefore, an experience of knowing other Christians brings us to know Jesus in another way that we'd never otherwise know. So the way, once I'm talking to him about his experiences and how his life was, I'm like, oh wow, I didn't know Jesus does things like that. Or I didn't know that your life can be so altered in this way, right? The experience of Jesus Christ creates community, right? The church experience of Christ creates community and community leads us back to him. So it's a cycle. It's a cycle. You, it, once you get to know Jesus, you want to talk to people about him. You want to, you want to find a church. You want to find a group. You want to just talk about him. And once you're in that group, then you get to know more of Jesus. And then once you want more of Jesus, you want more community. So it's a cycle that feeds itself that ends. And so when it's broken, you need to be realized, you need to realize what do I need to do? Because they work, they coincide with each other, right? So the unity of the gospel, it unifies people. Christ unifies people. So if you're looking, let's say, look uh, in your personal life where somebody, uh, you're always telling them, hey, we should catch up. Or you're telling a group of people, we should start a Bible study. Or you're telling this person, let's do this. You keep on talking, you keep on making statements, you keep on saying these things, but you don't follow it up, right? You're not going to uh, know all of the multidimensional beauty and glory unless you know other Christians, and know them very well, not surface level. Get to know them, who they are, what Christ has done for them. Right? And so when you have those people, I inevitably think about some people right now uh, that you know you need to catch up with. Or you know you want to talk with. And you know that one experience you had with them was, uh, it could have been life altering. You're like, I want to see them again. Right? And so now that you're, I guess you could say we're, we're isolated uh, in quarantine. And we're isolated in a way that we don't see each other as much in church right now. Can you see, can you feel the yearning in your heart to talk to people, to see people, to worship together, to pray together, right? So if you look and you don't miss church, if you don't miss community, if you don't miss fellowship, if you don't miss being together and talking about Christ, then look at your own heart. Look at your motives. Do you really recognize Christ's sacrifice? Do you really recognize and see the beauty of Christ? But if you do miss church, if you do miss community and fellowship, then start making steps even right now to, uh, to, to get ready when you come out of it to meet with people text people, uh, get to know how they're doing. You can still do a phone call. Just don't come out of this the same way as you were in it. Realize that you actually need each other or realize that you don't that realize how much you need each other. Right? So look at it. Do I need to focus more on Christ and realize how much I need people or do I need to actually make steps forward to this? Um, 
I encourage that you make the first steps in creating meaningful, uh, uh, creating fruitful relationships with people so that your relationship with Christ will go. So may God bless you guys so that you can desire fruitful relationships and actually make steps towards them. May God bless you guys.